Next problem asks us to find the area of an equilateral triangle whose perimeter is 45 inches. So, best I can, I'm going to draw an equilateral triangle. And if it's equilateral and the perimeter is 45, that means all the sides measure 15 inches, as they're all going to be the same. And if we have an area problem and we know side, 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 we're going to use Huron's area formula. Huron's area formula is this. We want S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C, where the sides are your A, B, and C, and S is A plus B plus C over 2. So the S in this instance is 45 over 2, or 22 and a half. So we would have 22 and a half times 22 and a half minus 15, 22 and a half minus 15, 22 and a half minus 15. Okay, 22 and a half minus 15 is seven and a half. So we have 22 and a half times seven and a half, three times. And I'm just gonna multiply all that together. Okay, that comes out to be 9492.1875. I'm going to take the square root of that number and I get 97 point, we'll use two decimal points, 43 square inches. All right, this next one is another triangle area problem. In a triangle, if we know an angle and two sides, we should be able to find the area of that triangle using the formula 1 half times the two sides times the sine of the angle. Okay, so typically we know both sides and the angle and then we just plug them in, compute it, we've got the area. In this particular problem it's kind of presented a little bit differently in that we know the area already we're asked to find one of these two sides. So we can still do this, we can still apply this formula to do this problem. So I'm going to have area 106.36 equals half times 12 times C times the sine of 80 degrees. So that's 106.36 equals half and 12 makes 6 C sine of 80 degrees. So C is going to be 106.36 divided by 6 sine of 80. And now I'm ready to type this all in. I get C to be 18. The next question, number 10, asked me to find the area and perimeter of a regular hexagon inscribed inside a circle of radius 8 inches. Um, a drawing is not required, but it can certainly help, so let's do my best to draw a circle here. Yikes. Um, now I want to put a hexagon inside the circle. Hexagon has six sides, so... like that. Um, and that's, so there's our picture. The only other thing we have is that the radius of this circle is 8 inches. Let me draw another radius. All right, now we're kind of in business here. Um, if you look at this, you can see that there are, because it has six sides, the hexagon, we make six triangles. Uh, what I'm going to do is find the area 
of one of these triangles. Since it's a regular hexagon, that means all the triangles have the same area, so I can then times that by 6, and I'll have uh, the area that I need. Um, what I do need, though, is I need an angle. This angle right here. Um, notice that inside all these triangles, I make a full circle, which is 360 degrees. Since there are six angles inside of here, 360 divided by 6 means that each of these angles measures 60 degrees. Okay, so we have, for this triangle, so the area of the triangle is equal to half times 8 times 8 times the sine of 60. So that's going to be 32 sine of 60. And we'll just go ahead and use a decimal, maybe to the nearest tenth. That's 27.7. Now that's the area of just the triangle. Take this times 6. I get an area of 166 point, say, 3. This is inches squared. So there's our area. Now we need to find the perimeter. So what I'm going to try and do is find the length of this edge, and I'll take it times 6 as there are 6 edges. And to do that, I'm going to use law of cosines. Um, so for the perimeter, we're going to want, here, let's do it like this. Let's call this a variable like x. So we have x squared equals uh, 8 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 8 times 8 times cosine 60 degrees. I'm going to type all this into the calculator. So that came out to be 192. If I take the square root of that, I'm just going to use a decimal again. This is 13 point about 9. We take that times 6. And we get 83.1 inches. The last two problems are some identities to verify. This first one is kind of a classic case where you would see two terms in the denominator, and so the strategy is to multiply by a conjugate pair, like so. Uh, the numerator, I'm not going to distribute. The denominator, we've done this type of FOIL, these two binomials together before, to know that that becomes 1 minus cosine squared. Now the 1 minus cosine squared in the denominator then gets replaced with sine squared from the Pythagorean identity. Okay, we can now reduce one of each of those signs, giving me 1 plus cosine x over sine x. And if I split up the fraction, I get 1 over sine x plus cosine x over sine x. 1 over sine is cosecant. Cosine over sine is cotangent and we have proven it. Last problem uh, has more use of the Pythagorean identity. Uh, this is an example one where if you look at the right side, what you're trying to prove has a cosine squared in it. So I probably don't want to do anything to the cosine squared because I want that in the answer. Uh, instead, there's no sine squared in the answer. So let's replace sine squared with its Pythagorean equivalent, 1 minus cosine squared. We leave this minus cosine squared. Now, of course, there's nothing to distribute, so the parentheses aren't really necessary. I can either rewrite it or just see it without the parentheses. And now these are like terms. There's one here and one here, so there are two of them. 
and that's done.